we were looking more at uh, sort of retail models, and we, we were focusing on fair trade and, uh, and where, where fair trade's going and, and, and possible um, problems and limitations of fair trade being that, that tangible products are made an awfully long way away. But actually, it's not the environmental impact of that. It's the time lag that, that, cons that producer groups are making things to order where a distributor in the UK or in, in Germany or wherever will, will canvas the views of shops, go out to the developing world, get a producer group. The producer group will then make things, get enough mass to fill up a container, ship it back. And that time lag often results in the products actually not being having demand anymore. So fair trade shops end up with stock that's three years, four years, five years old and then have to massively discount it and, uh, and not be able to get rid of it. So we were looking at, well, could we use 3D printing to massively compress that supply chain? Um, now, that has some limitations in that we would have to, to move from um, a, a very sort of tangible craft-based design of products to actually data. So, so these, these producer groups would actually have to become designers. And we said that has some limitations, but it also has some opportunity. We don't have to uneducate them like we have to uneducate Western designers to think about how to use an additive machine. So, you know, what would they produce if they had the tools that we have? And then to, to, to actually ship that data. And if there's no demand for that data, well, no, nobody's lost anything. They can augment the data, they can move on to the next product. We then said, well, how would you bring that into the West? There are ways, there are already online sales portals like Shapeways. Could Shapeways have a fair trade tab? Could it have product on it that is only fair trade product that then feeds that money back to the producer groups that create it? What we then said is, well, you could take that another step further, which is what is a fair trade shop? It could be anybody who actually has a 3D printing machine. It could be a coffee shop. It could be a, uh, it could be a supermarket. It could be anyone in their own home. So it's, it's, it's riding off this massive growth in home-based 3D printing. But in order to do that, you'd have to have those technologies in the developing economies. So they're designing products that they know can be made. Otherwise, they'll be selling data for products that just fail every time you try and print them. So, so that was really our thinking was around, is there, a, is there a different fair trade model that isn't based on shipping tangible product, but it's actually about shipping data? Um, which if there is no demand, then there's no loss. Uh, and it compresses that supply chain. So the sustainability is both environmental and economic. Um, and it's enormously scalable as we see a huge scalable growth in in low end home 3D printing. So I think that's something for investors. Excellent. Okay. <laughs>